we've disrupted all of the all of these natural cycles and to the extent that we can't just rewild we can't just say oh my gosh we made a mistake my bad i know there's <clears throat> approaching eight billion of us here and we're all reliant on sort of things but let's just rewild let's just let the land go back to the way it was well we can't right there's fences there's no longer predators we've lost the herds of animals and so the best that we can hope for is to learn from our learn learn those lessons from the past pay attention to our history pay attention to our present and the challenges that we're seeing manifest everywhere we turn and look and adjust our behaviors and adjust our practices to try to learn from the the wisdom of nature learn from the the wealth of knowledge that evolution has demonstrated to us it has given us the blueprints and the answer and we have tremendous innovation skills and potential that we can apply agro technology and agro ecology to celebrate nature's wisdom right to adjust the way we manage our lands to adjust the way we practice agriculture to as best as we can to emulate and celebrate those symbiotic relationships that literally instilled and built the thriving fertility in the lands that we've been mining for the last few generations. That is what we're talking about here when we talk about animal agriculture and the system that we're promoting that is a solution. And let's be clear, this is animals and plants together in harmony, as you would see in nature. There are no healthy ecosystems that are only plants. That would be a monoculture. There are no healthy ecosystems that are only animals. That's a confined animal feeding operation, right? It is only plants and animals together, what I call planet-based agriculture, right? Um, so I think, you know, it's too simplistic to say it's red meat. It's too simplistic to say it's cows and to overgeneralize them all as the same and to give plants a free pass. We talked about the carbon load. One third of the human generated carbon load in our atmosphere of greenhouse gases has come from tilling soil to create monoculture plants. So don't tell me plants get a free pass. Like, let's have honest conversations. I think that's the key. We have to have honest conversations. We can't have conversations that are, that are biased, that are tilted, because that seems to be what's happening to me. People want to use faulty data without explaining it to people who are not climate scientists and aren't going to understand it. They're going to show them pictures of feedlot cattle and get an emotional response. And of course, nobody wants to see a feedlot cow being uh, inhumanely treated. But behind that is a lot of misleading rhetoric. And that's what we're trying to counter here. I've read a statistic that in 1850, there were 150 million ruminants in North America. You mentioned 70 million buffalo. There were elk, pronghorn, antelope. 150 million ruminants in North America in 1850. And carbon PPM was, what, around 200 or something? So 150 million ruminants in North America could not, did not raise the amount of carbon in the environment. There were tons of enteric quote emissions from ruminants in 1850. And I think that now we have a slightly higher number of uh, ruminants in North America on these farms, although maybe perhaps worldwide as well. But the, the contribution, and I've talked about this in other podcasts, the FAO has even come out now and I, uh, we're doing a podcast actually in person, not via Skype, so I can't, uh, I can't screen share this, but there is an FAO link that I can put in the show notes. The FAO has also actually come out recently and said, looking at the data, if you look at the amount of methane in the environment coming from animals, it seems to be leveling off, but the amount of carbon in the environment continues to rise. It's pretty clear, this is from the FAO, the people who originally made the reports pointing the finger at ruminants, now saying it doesn't even really look like ruminants or these enteric emissions are actually a real contributor to carbon in the environment. But none of the plant-based people, none of the people on the other side of the equation are actually being aware of that possibility. So there's just so many inconsistencies here. And what we need is an honest conversation. I love that you brought up plants. Like plants don't get a free pass either, like you said. And I want people to understand monocrop agriculture is the destruction of an ecosystem. I love that you put it this way. You cannot have an ecosystem without animals on it, just like you can't have an ecosystem without plants. You can't have an ecosystem with cows in a feedlot, and you can't have an ecosystem where it's just monocrop farming for acres and acres and acres, because that is both tilling the land, which you note has provided, has, you know, resulted in a huge amount of carbon in the environment that nobody thinks about, that when you till the land, when you cut the soil, all this carbon dioxide is released in the environment. Nobody in the plant-based community ever admits that, and it destroys an ecosystem. How many other slugs, birds, mice, voles, rabbits have their ecosystems destroyed, snakes. And these are all part of this, quote, circle of life. When you monocrop hundreds or thousands of acres, all that is destroyed. 